Welcome to week 15 of Barrington Sports Monday Night Hockey. I'm Simon Mason and on tonight's show we have highlights from Surbiton vs Slough in the Women's Premier League, Wimbledon vs Reading in the Men's and our Women's Goal of the Month competition for February. First we visit Sugden Lane as the league leaders Surbiton hosted Slough. Fresh from losing their 53 yeah, game unbeaten good. run last time out, Surbiton was still without a number of international players and against a Slough side with four points from their last two matches. Let's join Charlie Broom for the best of the action. Here's McGonagall. Onto that left hand side and she'll get it back again. Slough captain and she's been dispossessed by King. Now Julia King into the circle. Can she get the shot away? Can she find a way past the keeper? Yes she can. But Tranquil Day getting just enough on it. The left hand kicker to keep it out of the goal but it did send it dangerously across the face of goal but too far in front of the Surbiton follow-up. Penalty corner and the straight flick is saved, second one is saved, here is Twig trying to get it away and the tackle from Laura Bailey is an illegal one and it's a penalty stroke. Let's have another look, good first save, second save from Twig and as Twig tries to get it away Bailey comes from behind and hooks the stick. Twig then up against Tranquil Day. Twig goes right and so does the keeper. Good save from Tranquil Day and she keeps the scores level. Slough back to Inverdale. Inverdale fires it in, gets a deflection into the goal. No touch inside the circle. Let's have another look as Inverdale fires it in. I think it's Collins who gets the touch on the edge of the circle. Dangerously into the path of Bevan, but she can't get the touch. Penalty corner to Serbton, and it's been deflected up and in. Becky Middleton on the 29th minute gets the deflection on the P flick spot to send it past Tranquil Day. From behind the goal, you'll see it clearly. She gets in front of the Slough defenders and deflects it into the goal. We hit just outside the circle for Serbton. Fired in and it's touched by Wolvert and Tranquil Day makes the save. Good touch from Wolvert getting in front of her marker. So Tranquil Day equal to it. Around the back it comes and up that right hand line, line by McLean to Chilton. Chilton to uh, Atkinson. And the line across it comes and well what a chance. That was lovely work initially by Chilton. And Atkinson with the drive along the line. Little look up, fires it to the back post and pulled wide of the goal by Sarah Page. It's been turned over. Here's Twig playing it forward. And uh, here is Evans. Evans driving into the circle, finds Page. Page on the reverse, and it's a save by the keeper. Long corner. Twig playing it forward. Evans comes off McGonagall's shoulder. Play on, says the umpire. Evans, good control. Sees Page to her left hand side. Page on the reverse stick, and the keeper just getting a glove to it. Three hits, it was three out for Slough. There's no one in front and it's been robbed back by Middleton. Middleton driving forward. Lovely work from Middleton. Middleton into the circle. This is Evans and Evans makes it 2-0. Well, she had very little option but to go for goal and at full stretch and with 12 minutes remaining, served and surely have an unassailable lead. Middleton, the scorer of the first goal, winning possession back in the Slough half. Lovely run here, taking out three players. The pass taking out the fourth, but there's nobody in the centre for Surbiton. So that is Evans' only option, and she finds the backboard. Crossfield ball is a nice one, and this is Evans out to that right-hand side. The first touch from Page allows Slout to get back and defend, but Page takes them on. That's two she's beaten. Page finds the skipper, Twig. Twig into the circle. And oh, is that a foot play on? Evans plays on, so does Tranquil Day. Everybody else had stopped. And the Slough keeper comes to her side's rescue to keep it at 2 0. As Twig comes into the circle here, she plays it 
towards goal. Comes up off a foot. Slough stop. Apart from the keeper who keeps it at 2-0. Collins. The right hand side. And Chilton again with one of those cross field balls to King. King out to uh, Wolven. Wolven on the reverse stick. Oh! What a chance that is. Full commitment on the far post. Julia King playing it to Jenna Wolven. Wolven weighing up her options on the reverse stick. And that is not far away at all. Now, can they find themselves a consolation? Twig is there to win possession. And Twig will walk it off to the sideline, running down the clock. And that is that. And Surbiton return to winning ways. They have beaten Slough comfortably in the end by two goals to nil. Elsewhere, Canterbury picked up their first win in five matches as they beat strugglers Bowden Hightown by three goals to two. Goals from Lucy Berner and Pippa Chapman gave East Grinstead the points away to Clifton Robinsons. An Amelia Andrew goal cancelled out an earlier Rachel Matt goal as Leicester and the University of Birmingham drew one all. And Holcomb produced a dominant performance to beat Reading 4-0 with all the goals coming in the first 40 minutes. So Surbiton have a five point lead over Holcomb at the top of the table with East Grinstead and the University of Birmingham rounding out the other playoff positions. At the bottom, Reading are running out of time to pull away from that relegation position, whilst Canterbury's win means that they're almost guaranteed of being safe for another year. Over to Wimbledon now as the league Lee leaders face Reading. Reading. Once Kings again, both sides were missing key fields. players away on international Inside duty. Reading would have to win to try and keep their playoff hopes alive. An interesting battle would be the Mantell brothers six. coming up against each other. Mantel Who comes out on top would be key in this one. Take it. There's a little throw it off a sign. Mantel who fires it in. And Phil Ball gets his stick on it, but puts it up and over the bar. There's the touch close from Wimbledon. Touch of Mantel. And we pass up to Ben Boone on the halfway line. And Boone goes past Stewart and Kinder and cuts back inside. That's three. He's beaten onto a first stick. Fires it across. Oh, and off the bar. I think James Carson in the centre gets a touch on the ball. Let's have another look. Ben Boone down this left-hand side. Lovely skill from the Reading number eight, taking out three players on the reverse stick. Fires it across, and indeed it does come off the bar, off Carson's stick. Penalty corner. And it comes to that far castle, and there's a slip going on here. Good save. Here is Mantel. The second save, and Mantel rifles it in, and Alexander gets a pad to it. Three good saves from the Reading goalkeeper. Let's have another look as it comes back in. There's the first, good save. Second one, that's a good save. Well, that is point blank, but great keeping from Alexander. Another one of those ranging passes from Richard Mantel that we see so often, and it puts Reading onto the front foot, but Jonty Clark has lost possession. And the ball up to Simon Mantel, and Mantel cuts back in field. Simon Mantel, head up, plays it up to that right hand side and Wimbledon over the halfway line into the 23 and this is a good run now can they find the ball back yes they can and it's in well from one end to the other in the matter of seconds and Chris Gregg gives Wimbledon the lead Chad Condon with the run down the right hand side and Condon when he got to the goal line showing good pace and good skill with one hand Drives along the goal line, little look up, there is Greg, open goal, 1 0 Wimbledon. Free hit on that right hand side. And this is uh, Evers. Evers up to Mantel. Simon Mantel! Not far away. There's Stephen Evers plays in. Simon Mantel. And it whistles just past the post. Here come Wimbledon once more. Lawrence plays it up to that right hand side and forward comes Tibble. And Mantel again! And Mantel gets the second goal. And as you would expect against his former club, there's not much of a celebration. Tibble cutting in field. 
Laying it up to the head of the D. Mantel trap. Hardly any space, but enough to squeeze it past Alexander. In from Dirty. And Richard Mantel hits James Bailey and it rebounds to safety. Here is Tom Woods. Plays it in field and Mantel just drops it out. And we'll get the ball back from Lawrence. Pass it up the park and that's a good looking ball and the touch from Chris Gregg draws the save from Tommy Alexander. Well, Simon Mantel is showing his brother Richard that anything he can do, he can do better. Good save from Alexander, who was alert. Now, ready. And they find themselves a goal here. Shingles goes down under the challenge from Greg. And ready. Play on quickly. In comes the ball. But it's loose and it's turned in. Ben Boone with what, a little over a minute left gets threading either a, a consolation or a lifeline in this game we'll wait and see time certainly against them as the ball is fired in takes a deflection at the top of the circle and that means Bailey has further to go than he would have expected and Castle or Boone beats him to it restart quickly take him and uh, Wimbledon get the free hit and tell Plays it back. Women, we've got to be careful here. Well, they've been robbed in a chance of Reading. A three-on-one situation. Good tackle in the end, but the shot comes in and it's saved. Oh, my word. Wimbledon, who have looked so comfortable in this match, almost undone by Ben Boone on the reverse stick, seconds after conceding the first. Reading, will they get another chance to get a dramatic equaliser? Mantel fires it in. Long corner. Well, Wimbledon suddenly backs to the wall. And there is the final whistle. And Wimbledon, in the end, hold on for the draw, but it shouldn't have been so tight. Final score, Wimbledon 2, Reading 1. Beeston took an early lead in their match against Surbiton, but a strong second half performance saw the away side take all three points with a 4-1 win. Jackson and Piper put East Grinstead two goals up at half-time. Pallet then extended their lead early in the second half before a fantastic fight back gave Hampstead and Westminster a 4-3 win. Shipley got two goals and one for Kalman, with the winner from Guys Brown coming minutes before the end of the match. In the final match of the day, Holcomb put in a comfortable performance to beat Brooklyn's by five goals to one, Banderat getting a double. The top four are now looking more secure, with Hampstead and Westminster opening up a five-point gap over fifth-placed Beeston. At the bottom, Loughborough are now all but relegated, with Canterbury now just two points behind Brooklands in the fight to avoid the relegation playoffs. Now it's time for you to win a £50 Barrington Sports voucher. Take a look at these goals from the Women's Premier League and then head over to the Barrington Sports website to vote for your favourite.